Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today we do wet blending of the red cloak and also a bit of TMM. I'm kinda really focused on wet blending these days because I think it has lots of potential. Join me as I won't stop until I get really comfortable at wet blending. Also, I feel this is my best TMM so far. Watch as we turn this engine sear into this. Oh, by the way, my daughter Nico is about to finish her first Eva diorama. So do check out her channel. I'll put the link on top. Now let's paint. First, we dry brush burnt iron. I love dry brushing as my initial step because it's a very carefree like painting method. You could do it even during late nights when you're practically cross-eyed and very tired already. Dry brushing is the perfect technique to jumpstart any project. The metal colors has the finest metallic pigments of any metallic Vallejo paints. The chrome will use as highlights later. First, we do a lazy wash. I highly recommend that you use inks for this one because washes does not stain enough for this purpose. The objective here is to really tone down the shine of the metallic paint because even if it's burnt iron, it's one of the darkest metal colors. It's still so shiny. A single pass of this ink wash or a couple of passes will really tone down our finish and our highlights later will be looking very good. I said in my previous video that I do not recommend the mecha colors for brush painting, the base colors, but I highly recommend them for dry brushing. The Mecha Color range is perfect for airbrushing and I use the primers and the varnishes for my miniatures because I may not have the best painted minis but I have the most durable. Seriously though, the Mecha Colors are great for dry brushing too and you will have a very scratch resistant finish. Notice how the mecha steel pops because of the toned down burnt iron. Now this is a bit of an experiment because we're using a darker base color. Normally you should paint the lighter like base color or the base color itself red so that it won't you won't be focused on the coverage and just be focused on the blending. Also notice that I use our highlight sauce which is a like watered down retarder medium to thin down this paint because we're using the glass palette. I don't want to switch to the wet palette because I'm lazy. Now we do wet layering. You'll see later or as you watch this video why I called it wet layering and not wet blending. That's good. First, we thin down the paints, both paints, the darker hull red and the lighter dark vermilion. You need a base color consistency because if it's too watered down, you might as well just do glazing and it's difficult to control the blending if it's too watered down. And if the paint is too thick, well, that's not good. So first step is to paint the hull red fresh from the palette and don't let it dry. Now we lay down or paint the lighter color on top of the darker color. These videos are only sped up two times the speed, the normal speed, so that my brush strokes will look really impressive. Seriously though, I hope you don't find this wet blending portion of the video boring because I kind of did not edit out some of the portion so that you could see the slow buildup of the light color. So you have a couple of minutes as window for the wet blending 
because we use retarder medium, thin down retarder medium. And as you paint on top of the previous layer, the previous layer stays wet and thus you could do wet blending. Also now I think it's kind of obvious why I called it wet layering because we're basically layering a smaller or painting a smaller area with the lighter color but wet blending at the same time. This is actually how you exactly paint with oil paints because the oil paints even if you use turpentine or turpenoid, it stays wet for a few minutes. And if you thin down oil paints with linseed oil, it will stay wet for months. The main key here or the main trick here is to thin down your paints into base color consistency. Also, don't rub the paint too much. It will blend on its own and it's really fun actually. It took me around 10 minutes to do this and it was really quick and simple. Wait, or maybe 20 minutes? But I think if we painted the dark vermilion first as our base color and then do the same technique as you see here but instead we shade with the hull red or even purple and blend those two colors together, we won't be focused on the coverage of the lighter color because it's our base color. So I think that will be faster and we'll do it on our next video. However, I'm honestly kind of liking the look so far of what we've done with the red cloak. It looks really intense and the colors are really vibrant and I like the contrast. So after around 3 passes of the red vermilion, I'm really happy with the result. Again, I think if we painted the lighter color as the base color, it would be twice as fast. But I like the result so far and I think that will yield the same result anyways. I think this is my best wet blending so far but we'll try again in our next video. Now we do glaring which is my go-to technique. It's basically just thinning down the paints with glaze medium so that it would be softer than the usual watered down paint and we paint the highlights. Glaring is better than basic layering in my bias opinion and you should check out my other videos on glaring. It's a bit shiny but that's great because we use the shine to paint where the highlight should be. The more detailed finishing touches of this painting will be included in the first few drafts of my new book. And the drafts will be available for all the members of this channel and to my patrons. My sincerest apologies as I cannot really comfortably paint the details while recording on camera or on film or on video because I just don't have the setup to focus on painting the details while recording on film. Now for our final finishing touch, we do scratches and highlights of the TMM with model air chrome. You may also use Mecha Color Light Steel or Metal Color Chrome. Now it's done. I kinda underestimated this model. This is my personal model actually, my army. This is my first AdMech, painted AdMech. And I kind of underestimated the model. I thought it was just dry brushing and then wet blending of the red cloak. But it has so many tiny details. It took me around 10 hours or maybe even 12 hours to finish this one model. And I'll be ready next time for my next AdMech. I hope you like this TMM and wet blending video. I'll do more wet blending videos, especially with painting skin, painting arc skin, and painting leather and stuff like that. Because I really want to push wet blending or learn wet blending and be really comfortable with that technique. 
However, I hope I fulfilled like the result of our poll last time in which I asked if you like TMM or NMM as my next video but we'll do NMM soon and also some more TMM. That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!